Thank you for joining us. This is Happiness, the Skeptic's Guide with Chartered Psychologist and author Dr. Gary Wood and professional skeptic and self-help abuser Paul Flower. In this episode, we look at techniques to plan for best future selves and happier endings. And for a podcast that aims to make you happier whatever your objections, we encounter more than a little resistance. Are we ready? I'm there with you. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. (laughs) Thanks for listening to... The beginning is just the end. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Happiness of Skeptics. No. So, Happy Endings is the, the topic of today's podcast. Now, in the previous one, we talked about truth and trust and how it develops at the start of life. And so in this one, we're going to look at a bit, start to look at a bit of hope and also look at maybe our end of life happiness, how we can look backwards to look forwards. Confused now? You will be more (laughs) sensitive. I certainly am. So, you know, it's, uh, we're look. we're going to be optimistic about the past by looking into the future. We're going to be nostalgic for the future. Yes. Optimistic for the, optimistic for the future. I will explain. So at the last, in the last point, we talked about your favorite new psychologist, Eric Erickson. E.E. And we were talking about, you know, the idea of at the start of our lives, we jostle with basic trust and mistrust and, This time, we're going to look at the last stage in Ericsson's Eight Ages. And this one is when we're at the end of our days, we tussle with integrity versus despair. And if we come at it in a a positive way, the the outcome is wisdom. So we may have acquired a bunch of knowledge as well. And, And if we come out a negative way, we come out disdainful, despairing and dogmatic all of which seem to be the happiness, uh, the the happiness, the opposite of happiness. <laughs> so remember in the, I'm thinking of the storytelling, we were talking about stigmata and well, well, schemata, you brought up stigmata. <laughs> Could, couldn't think of a third one. Here we've got one, dogmata. Yay. Right. Yes, I was obviously far more excited about that <laughs> than uh, Mr. Flair. He's looking at me. So. When we look back over our lives, we're, it's, it's basically at the end of our lives, we're thinking about knowledge versus wisdom. So knowledge is having the information and his wisdom is knowing how to apply it and how you've used it to make your life meaningful and fulfilling. Okay. So it's kind of, we're, we're harking back to the original, not the original, the third episode, which was happiness and meaning. So I'll put you out your mystery now. That that's supposed to Please be the backstory. Do. That's supposed to be the backstory to enlighten and your eyes glazing over. <laughs> so in preparation for this, I asked you about a bucket list. Now it's based on the 2007 film with Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson, a cheerful tale of two terminally ill men uh, that are about to kick the bucket, and they oh. create and they create a wish list of what they want to do before they die. So have you had any thoughts on your bucket list? Um, no. Not at all. Promptly after you mentioned it, I completely forgot about it, which is generally the way that our conversations go. No, I, you know, I, I've had more of a think about bucket lists for the reason that, uh, you know, we've all been through a pretty difficult year. I have personally lost a couple of friends in the last mm. year, and their passing has given rise to me thinking about, you know, what my future should be. They weren't that much older than me, and that mm. made me think, okay, well, if I only had X number of years left i yeah. wouldn't want to spend it doing what i'm doing now potentially or i would would have wanted to have done this that and the other i don't think i have a specific bucket list i think the the concept of a bucket list means that there is the potential for disappointment if you don't fulfill some of those things so it's a bit like a new year's resolution i am although i i do have new year's resolutions as it happens but uh, we you know we steer clear of them for for the point of avoiding failing. And that's uh, that's been one of my principles of life for uh, probably a decade or so now. So if it was on your bucket list to be happier, you're going to avoid it so you don't, so you, <laughs> just in case you fail uh, to be happy. Very good. Very good. Is that is that what we're saying? Is that yes. what is is that why is that the point we've got? Is that where we've got? I think a bucket to? list tends to be something more kind of physical, doesn't it? It tends to be, you know, I must go to Vegas, yeah, or I must have read the Quran, or you know, or I must memorize this, or or know by heart that, you know, I I always think of a bucket list as, as being some kind of 
it's more of a kind of I've got ambitions to do X, Y, and Z. Whereas ambitions can get you into a, a bit of a corner where you you don't really actually get anywhere. It's true. Uh, when we think about the bucket list, it's often think we think about those attention grabbing things that we can share and brag on Facebook about. Yeah. But what if you had twenty four hours? What would you be doing? Oh my god. <laughs> I thought I'd, I thought I'd cheer you up. Thought. Yeah, but what would you what would you do? You must be making people happier, not making them think they've only got twenty four hours left on Earth. Well, what would you do if I had twenty four hours? Then I'd probably spend it clearing up all the mess that I've created with my uh, financial and business dealings, so I didn't leave a mess for uh, who, those I leave behind. So it so would the, be a very dour twenty four hours to be perfectly Well, no, honest. but but within the seeds of that is you've spotted something that the seeds of a goal. The reason I asked about bucket lists, it taps into something called peak ends theory. And it's the idea that we remember our lives as a series of peaks and troughs. Okay. And of course, these are the stories we repeat. We don't t- tend to me- remember all the stuff in between. And what we remember are often the end points of the way things resolve. And we remember the in- emotional impact of them. So if they if it's a very positive emotion and it, happy ending, we tend to remember those. And the same if it's a negative one. Okay. So we don't remember chronologically, and we or not chronologically, photographically. We don't remember every detail. We just remember the highlights. So a bucket list is a way to end on the high notes, to make more of the peaks, to make more positive memories. And I think it's important to recognise that it doesn't have to necessarily be a, a flashy thing to do. It just has to be something that's going to make your life meaningful. So it could be quite small. So, it, it, you know, is a bucket list something, though, that, that only old people like us think about? Speak for yourself. <laughs> I think it's – if you if you think about it, you've talked about that astronaut. Was it Chris Hadfield? Yes. Well, what – what was his plan if it wasn't a bucket list? It wasn't a bucket list, was it? You know, he was ah, he was a but, kid but it, when he saw Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. So, yeah. you know, the theory from him was this is, you know, this is how I want my life to play out. That, yeah, that instance, doesn't strike me as a bucket list. A bucket list is something for, for end-of-life retirees. Well, no, he could have actually thought – we could phrase it, I'm going to be an astronaut before I die. And and the way you go about it could be exactly the same. So you work out what the points are and you set some plans and you start to get them. So rather than just think as this kind of, you know, a fun th- – well, fun thing from a, this film about death, <laughs> it can be a way to actually think about – what me- when I'm sitting, you know, on my 80th birthday party, what memories do I want to look back on? And what do I need to do now to put those start to put those memories okay. in place? Now that's a little bit that's a little bit of a better way of phrasing, it, I think. So, you know, what do I want to be looking back on, you know, that, that yeah. would make that gives me a story to carry on into my old age? What would I be proud of? Yeah. So that's when I asked you the the other the other letter, the other technique then I prepared you with that one is letter from a future self. And I bet you didn't do that one either. No, absolutely. There's no question that I am the sceptic in this particular episode without a shadow of a doubt. And you can even hear it in my tone of voice, I think. Yes. (laughs) Only wish the listeners could see your expressions as well. (laughs) <laughs> thankfully they can't rolling his eyes like a one-armed bandit yeah let let us to my future so i could you know i can potentially see the the benefits of, of you know what you would tell your younger self so you can pass that knowledge on and wisdom on to younger people i genuinely do not understand this concept well it's the idea is you project yourself into the future you can imagine you're happier you and what would you tell yourself so six months in the future and what advice would you give to yourself as though you're giving advice and encouragement that you might give to someone else? I want to be happier. So what would the six month you say to the current you? Hmm. So I think that that's a slightly different. Yeah. Six months is is a short period of time and, and kind of, you know, so you give, you've already given me 24 hours to live and now you're giving me six yeah. months. So, you know, I'm happy. No, already. I haven't, no, you're not dying after six months. So you don't like, so you don't like six thanks, months. Thanks. Thanks, doctor. You, you don't like retirement. What do you like? So the idea with this is, I want to share a story. When I was, what? 14 I asked my granddad I said what are your regrets and the two he gave me was 
You were a very game, advanced child, weren't you? I, I've got other stories about I was a very precocious child. Anyway, he said to me, he said, one was getting a tattoo. And it's interesting that I've never got a tattoo. And the other one was, he said, I regret not planning for my retirement. And I thought, what the hell does that mean? I thought you just sit there with your feet up and watch watch the wrestling on a Saturday afternoon when it used to be on a Saturday afternoon. Really, what he was saying is there was he expected for it to take care of itself and it didn't. Mm. And there's a message there in in life sometimes. Is it do we expect happiness just to take care of itself? Do we just chance chance it and think, ah, oh, if I just stick in there, we'll get happier? Or do we put some? What plans? are you saying? If we've got to do the groundwork now. Yeah. to prepare ourselves for, for being happier in the future. I think what, what's interesting, I was reading about, you know, if you talk to people and ask them whether you whether they think they've they've changed very much or whether they think they're going to change very much, their, their character and, and the person that they are, most people don't think they're going to change much. No. But in reality, if you think about yourself 10 to 15 years earlier and what you were like, you probably have changed quite a lot. So the change that, you, that happened to you over those 10 to 15 years, you can make changes to your future self of, of the same kind of level. Yeah. I think that the issue is sometimes we think when we say we've got to make changes, it's people say, well, I, you know, I'm happy who I am. And if you don't like me, take it or leave it. Yeah. And there is an argument when you accept yourself as you are, then you can change. There, there is, there might be a core strand there, but it, it's not saying that there doesn't have to be better choices along with that core strand. It could still be you, but just writing a better story. So you're still there as the narrator. You're just actually telling a better story. Okay. It's, a, it's a technique in expressive writing, creative writing. It's also used in therapy. It's called the best future self. And that's what we... So what's on your bucket list then? Because, we, you know, we, we've delved a little bit into my non-existent bucket list. What, what's on yours? Well, I don't think... I, I've got to find the piece of paper. It was written on it. Uh, <laughs> before that, I talk, talk about... Speak amongst finish, yourselves. Just finish this bit off about the best, the best future self yeah. is that you take stock of what is already working and what you want to keep. You decide where you want to be. You decide what other steps are. You create an action plan. You take action. Okay. So you might want to think of your 80th birthday party. What's that going to look like? It's just a way to project yourself into the future to say, okay, I don't want the future to happen by chance. I want there to be some design. Now, everything you plan might not work out, but a lot more will work out than if you hadn't tried at all. Sure. I, I kind of understand it. You know, so f- failing to plan is playing to fail is, is, is the glib way of putting it. So is what you're currently doing at your current pace going to get you where you want to be? That's the question in terms of happiness. No, otherwise you uh, wouldn't be here. And you remember we talked about the, uh, I, I forget which episode it was, it might be one of the, I think it was the Talking Therapies one, yes, when we mentioned clinical psychologist Stephen Bryars. Yeah. The aims of therapy, or, or indeed this happiness process, is to forge a new narrative, one that reinterprets the past and opens up new possibilities for the future. And that's essentially what we're doing. We're starting small, we observe the results, we modify. Plan, action, review. It's just another creative writing way of setting goals, basically, or making plans, or thinking about the memories before they actually happen. I think if we phrased it in a different way, if we if we were saying... What are the memories you want to create for your future self is almost, yep. to me, maybe I'm, I'm just being obtuse, but it's a better no. way of phrasing it. No, heaven forbid. Yeah. So it's basically thinking about, because we've, you know, we've talked a lot about stories and about storytelling. What we're thinking, we talked about being the protagonist, the first actor, the leading role. Yep. So are we a leading role in our happiness story or are we a bit part player who just has to go along? Or is it a non-speaking part? Are we an extra? So it's looking at the level at which you want. So plan for your retirement. Yes. Plan for six months ahead, plan for next week, plan for tomorrow. What would you put into your diary for it to have the better chance of creating some happier peak experiences? That's all. Okay, I get that. So So have you found your bucket list yet? Bucket list is to do a, I am right, I am currently back in the studio writing my new album. So it's to do a musical gig again. Okay. One is to do some more stand-up. I want to learn to speak. Stand-up a bit more. 
<laughs> yeah, stand up a bit more. Well, I mean, it's obviously stand up comedy. Yeah. Learn to speak Greek fluently because it, it's been a, a lifelong ambition and I haven't done it yet. Why Greek? I just love Greece. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, right. So I'm, I'm coming to your next musical gig and I'm coming to your next stand up gig. So that, you know, okay, I'm then- going to make sure those things happen, right? Write another book. I need to develop a passive income stream. I want to read Ulysses. And I want to get as close as possible to write like Hemingway. Ooh, that's an interesting one. I didn't see that one coming. Well, the, the uh, having never read Hemingway as well, uh, <laughs> no. But the, <laughs> as close as as close as I've come so far is the book I wrote called Letters to a New Student, uh, because I did this really tight edit and I got the reading age down to something like ooh, it was just under six, grade six which is about 12-year-olds. So the secret is to get it so simple you can understand it, but not simple enough to sound patronising. I always told students, you know, in essays to me, please do not be promulgating your esoteric cogitations. <laughs> just, yeah, very good. just tell me your deepest thoughts. So I've, I've really got into the idea of honing the, the writing, so that would be on my bucket list. Anyway... I hope this is so. This has really been, although we've talked about. You it promised today, me a happy ending, and I'm going to be going to be disappointed. Aren't I? But the the point is, is there is a happy ending, and it's to actually think about what do you want the happy ending to be, and that what can you start to do to put those things in place. And the idea is not to wait for oh, I'm going to win the lottery. <laughs> start small. My view is, you know, used to people wait. I'm going to win the lottery. Yeah, I'm going to put a, a thought out to the universe. I'm going to do some cosmic ordering and the universe is going to grant me all my wishes. My view is to start an action plan, start getting the stuff for yourself. Then if the cosmic order comes through and delivers all duplicate goods and stuff for you, you can sell that stuff on eBay. But you will have already started living. And, and that's the point with happiness is what small things can you do? So we, I yeah. know we started with the great big death questions and retirements and and then you didn't even like the six months, but you don't even like next week either, so. Sometimes. Where do we go from here? Well, you know, as we've heard in previous episodes, you are Dr. Goals, Actions and Values. So if we keep that in mind and... Uh, uh, we, we still haven't thought of the IN, so I can, we can have a gather. No, we're getting there. We will get yes, there. Don't worry about but that. But that does make you Stacey. So. so <laughs> there are lots of places in the world where this podcast is listened to where that won't make any sense whatsoever. Well, no, actually, there is lots of places in the world where this podcast isn't, isn't listened, listened to, to. <laughs> that won't make any sense at all. <laughs> Very good point. And on that note, we thank you for joining us on Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide. It is a journey, and uh, we'd like to have you along for the ride. Speak to you very soon. That was and is Happiness, a Skeptic's Guide with Paul Flower and me, Gary Wood. And in this episode, we looked at bucket lists and best future selves. If you like the podcast, do share and tell your friends. And if you've really enjoyed it, you can support the show at buymeacoffee.com forward slash skeptics guide. 